Hey folks, it's Ray at DCRamRecord.com here, and today I've got a full hands-on user interface video of the new Garmin 4Runner 745. I've been using it for quite a while now, so I'm pretty familiar with the user interface and how it works and kind of all the menus and that kind of stuff. Uh, and this is all this video is. It's like I'm basically going to point this camera here straight at this for the entire video. I'm going to walk through all the features and how it works and all that kind of goodness. So it's it's really as simple as that. If you want my full video kind of review of sorts on the 745, hit it up in the corner there. Uh, but this one may be a bit boring. And if you want something more exciting, then I don't know, find a cool drone video or something on the channel uh, that's a little more adventurous. Uh, but for now, we're gonna dive right into the menus on this watch and dig into how it all works. So right now I've got here uh, the default watch face. And this watch face is actually pretty cool. It's kind of one of my more favorite recent watch faces, if you will. Uh, you got the time there, of course, sure. And you got the day and you got the miles run this week. It's only Tuesday, I've been mostly cycling and, and swimming this week. Uh, but at the bottom you got the load and the load is pretty interesting. So this is using the first beat algorithms for load. And you can see right now my load is 850. And if I go down into the widget glances, You'll see my training status right there. I can crack that open. I can see my fitness is basically plateauing the last few days because I've been up late doing videos and things like that. My load is up though. And then that little icon right there is for heat acclimation because it's gotten pretty warm in the last couple of days. Uh, and I can go down here and I can see my VO2 max. That's a cycling VO2 max. And then you can also see the running VO2 max when you've done a running workout more recently. Uh, and then below that, I see my load. In this case, you see the Wednesday load from last Wednesday, a hike down the Alps is really driving this, uh, as well as a bike ride after that. And then the Thursday, Friday, Saturday, I didn't do anything. And then Sunday, I did a easy workout. And then Monday, again, some more riding. And then today, I did just a simple swim. Uh, you can see the total load from that, though, is still 850 uh, within that range of 446 to 988, which is the optimal for me for right now. Now, the thing about the training load here is they don't really know what your goals are. So this is basically saying, if you want to keep on improving, then stay within these ranges. Uh, and that's where if you go back up here, uh, you can see like we're down here first uh, to load focus. These are the targets and basically the different types, uh, but basically the different kind of load areas that you can work on. If you go up here though, you'll see this is my fitness staying static, my load is up and the productivity status is productive right now versus if I was just kind of maintaining, it'll say maintaining, or if I do too much, it'll say unproductive. Uh, and this will change day to day. So depending on how long this video goes, if we drop into tomorrow here, uh, it might actually change on the middle of the video. So uh, I got about 15 minutes, I think left. Uh, so going on down to the rest of the training load bits there, recovery, 15 hours remaining, almost full recovery says right there. And then one more time, heat acclimation 30% based on it being a hotter day today. And there's also altitude acclimation if you're above a certain level and you'll acclimate over time based on how long you're at that level. So going back here, this is the widget glances. We saw this on the Phoenix 6 series introduced and then the 945. Uh, earlier this year, I think it was. And so what you have is basically all the widgets, but condensed down into three widgets uh, per page. And you just go each one of them and you can crack open. I can look at steps, for example, see steps for the day, steps for the last week. There's that hike there again, almost 26,000 steps over the course of that, uh, kind of bumping those numbers up there. This is Pulse Ox, which is the um, red sensor that you see on the back. That's the Pulse Oximetry sensor measuring SpO2. Let's see if I can get it to trick it to turn it on here and get that red light. Otherwise, the green light is your normal heart rate uh, sensor there. So let's see. Nope, keep still. Come on, let's see if I can do it here. Come on, is it under there? Yeah, there's my green one, um, but I'm looking for the red one. And again, it's pretty sensitive. It knows when you're actually trying to mess with it or not. So uh, here we go, ready? It's gonna be really quick. One, two, three. Oh, uh, nope, can't get it. Sorry, it's a red light. That's all you really gotta know. It's just like my shirt, but it's not green. Uh, and then I can click down here and I can see my history over the last week against altitude, which is really where the pulse ox is more useful from a non-medical side. Uh, so you can see my altitude uh, about 5,000 feet or so in this case. And uh, this is basically five days, the last five days roughly. So uh, some of my stuff on Wednesday isn't showing up here in this particular graph, which is too bad because it was a little bit cooler in that case. Uh, so going back into the notifications, uh, or sorry, the widget roll, you've got notifications right here. Uh, and I'm too far away from my phone. I kept it in the other room so it doesn't buzz. Uh, but I can just crack up my notifications and look at those. Uh, and I can dismiss them essentially, uh, and I can read them, but I can't respond to them, at least on iOS anyway. So I can't go ahead and text back to someone or something like that. Oh, hey, and a quick note, if you're finding this video interesting or useful or something like that, go ahead and just simply whack that like button at the bottom there. It really helps out this video and the channel quite a bit. Now, going into the sports side for a second, uh, which is, of course, the main reason you probably bought this watch, is I'll press this upper right-hand button right there, 
and this allows you to choose a sport. You have your default sports right there. But I'll point out that the screen, this is making it look a little bit darker than it is just because of lighting and stuff here. This is pretty clear and crisp uh, to my eyes in real life, uh, but I can only do so much there. So if I turn it like this a little bit, you can see that. You're turning at some of the reflections. So you can see how that adjusts, you know, how clear it looks. Uh, again, some of it's just camera tricks. I'll try to keep it a little bit more like this if I can without the reflections popping in. Anyways, down the bottom, those are my favorites there. And if I go all the way down here, I get into uh, the ability to add all these sports. You can see all these sports, some of them depend on the barometric altimeter, like uh, skiing, downhill skiing, for example, where it'll automatically count your runs. Uh, others are GPS based, others are indoor based. Uh, and then some of them are unique to the 745, in particular, this one right here uh, called Track Run. And so the way this works is first by a new feature I can also mention. Really the only two new features on the watch are track mode and the daily suggestion. Uh, so in this case, it'll give you a daily suggestion for running and cycling each day um, when you try to open up those sports. And right now it's showing me to rest because I've already done uh, a workout from today. And I guess yesterday was a bit uh, harder as well on the cycling side. And if I go back here, you'll see if I go all the way back to there and then go back down into run, it'll say the same thing here. Uh, or sorry, to bike, uh, and the same thing. But you can actually get different workouts for bike and run. It'll give you like legit structured interval workouts depending on the day. And again, we might get these once I bridge into tomorrow here, another eight minutes or so. So stay tuned for that exciting bit of uh, non-spoiler. We'll find out what happens there in, in eight minutes. Uh, assuming my battery lasts that long, by the way, 6%. I think I should be good though, hopefully. Uh, so into track mode in the meantime, I'll talk about this. So when you select track mode, and you just say dismiss that workout of the day, uh, it's assuming you're starting on the track. And this is a super cool feature. Uh, and if you hold down the left-hand side and go track run settings, you can go and select your lane number, one through eight, I think, or nine, nine. Uh, there we go. Uh, but you don't actually tell it how long the track is. Instead, it figures that out by itself. So once you go ahead and you start that track run on the track, what Garmin recommends you do is to do two laps, ideally four laps of the track, and then to save that workout and end it. And what that does is it recognizes using their algorithms what that track is from a dimension standpoint, uh, how long the straightaways are, how long the curves are, the radius of the curves, all that fun stuff. It figures all out and then actually saves that track into memory on the watch. In fact, if you were to plug this into a computer, you can see this track file in the same way you'd see an activity file or a course file. It's a legit file and it says, this is this track on this spot and the dimensions of this track and the exact shape and all that kind of fun stuff. Uh, now, you don't have to do that. You can still go just to the track and start running, but Garmin says the first couple laps will be a bit non-perfect. And then once it hits that you know two to four lap marker, then it locks it on and it looks like someone's just drawing this perfectly uh, autonomous, if you will, uh, machined or perfect line in the exact same spot on the exact lane of the track around and around every single time. And that has really two main purposes. One is to give you a pretty GPS map for Strava or whatever else that shows you on the exact lane that you specified right here. So that's useful. Uh, but two, also the distances. The distances are locked specifically to that lane, specifically, I hate that word, uh, to that lane itself. And then each time you pass, you know, the given markers on the track, it'll be correct to that. And so in my experience and testing this over a number of different track workouts, is it's generally for each 400 meter loop that I would do uh, within usually two meters plus or minus of that. So if I cross the line, uh, it could show, you know, 398 or 399 or 400 or 401, 42, something in that range there. Every once in a long while, I'll get like a 404. I think I've got like like one 405, uh, but I mean, it's super impressive. So you're not getting any variance in those loops at a meaningful level. Uh, now what it doesn't do, it doesn't snap those distances back down to say 400 meters each and every time. That's something that Koros does uh, on their watches like the Pace 2, for example. Uh, they know that when you press the lap button at 402, you meant 400. They just simply round that stuff in. Uh, Garmin says they're open to that. They says they're actually really open to that idea. Uh, and so I think we might see that down the road. Uh, inversely though, Garmin's recognition of the track from a GPS track standpoint, like what it looks like on a satellite view, has been more accurate than Coros's. So Coros puts me in the bushes at either of the two curves, uh, and it kind of pulls me a little bit into the infield, versus Garmin's is like spot on. In fact, if you look at like what these track workouts look like, let me just pull open an activity down here. History, I can go back a ways and find one. I have to go back a long ways to find one through a lot of activities, that is. Uh, there we go, I think this one right here. So. Uh, this, if you look at that little icon, I know it's tough to see, but just look at that icon. That is so, let's see, map, 
if I can get this right there. Come on. Look at that. That's my track workout. That is what that looks like uh, for this particular track. Just It looks so perfect. Like it's just, it's just a perfect line. And if I go back on this one, I had redone the calibration on this one. So you can see my 1600 meter calibration there. If I go down into that again, the map, it looks close, but it's not quite perfect. You see a little bit at the edges up there. Uh, so it's very, very close on the calibration uh, of this particular track, but not perfect. And that's where once I got the next one where I actually did the real workout, then it, it nailed that spot on. And so I love this feature. Uh, I can't wait though for it to potentially have, you know, the lock to 800 meters, 400 meters, 200 meters, et cetera. You know, it basically knows that when you're at that corner, that's what you meant. That would be like, the, the pinnacle of track mode. Uh, so anyways, that's that's track workouts. That's uh, the uh, suggested daily workout. You know, other sports are all essentially the same. You go into run, you choose it, and we dismiss the structural workout for the day. Uh, you've got all of your different data fields you can customize by holding down long hold, run settings, data screens. Uh, you can go into here, you can customize all of these. It connects to the Garmin HRM Pro as well as the RD Pod and the HRM Try and the HRM Run to get running dynamics information. Uh, and then you can customize each one of these. You can add the music controls. Uh, so I don't have a pair of headphones right now, but I can kind of show you the music bits if we go on back here. Yeah, it's a bit of a race between the battery on this and hitting the next day. We'll see what happens. Uh, so if I go down here, I've got some Spotify music on this one. There we go, Spotify. Uh, I've got the Beastma tracks. Uh, so this links up to Spotify. There's music on this watch. Uh, there is no maps though. So if you look at this compared to the 945, the main differences are the 945 has maps, uh, the 945 has a bigger battery, and the 945 has a slightly bigger watch. And, and that's it, really. Um, in terms of going up to the Phoenix lineup, those same conditions I just mentioned there as well. And there's a couple of like waypoint type stuff um, that you might probably never actually use in a hiking scenario um, that is there as well as the former 945 and the Phoenix also have connectivity to like an archery bow of some sort. I mean, there's stuff that's not, you probably don't even know exists in the Garmin ecosystem and they're not supported on the, the 745, but like sensors, if I go into sensors, for example, so we're gonna just go run for the fun of it. Uh, go down to sensors here. Uh, so in here, I can add all sorts of sensors. So headphones, external heart rate, speed, cadence, power, foot pod, verb, action camera, tempi, temperature sensor, DI2, uh, ETAP, campy, et cetera, lights, radar, extended display, RD pod, muscle O2, inReach, and smart trainer. So this even has a new smart trainer integration functionality that was introduced about a month ago, I think, uh, on the Phoenix 6 and 945. That's here as well. And in fact, if you look at all the sensors I've paired, I've got plenty of sensors in here. So uh, lots of options. You can pair multiple sensors if you want to. There's the HRM Pro, there's the power meters that I've got, a bunch of power meters shifting and so on, all in there. Uh, wrist heart rate, you know, I'm not gonna talk about accuracy in this video, you can see my full end of the review on that. Uh, but overall, pretty much what we know from Garmin in the past, uh, from the 945 Phoenix 6, it's the same optical heart rate sensor there. So no changes to that sensor package. Uh, and I'm seeing basically the same accuracy level, which is mostly pretty good. A couple quirks here and there, but overall uh, pretty darn stable. Uh, so how are we doing time here? What are we on? Three percent there in 30 seconds left at the top of the day. So what can we talk about for the next 30 seconds? Uh, so let's go into the settings for a second. Uh, hope we don't kill the battery in between now and then. We got watch face, we got sensors, we got music, we got phone. Uh, it does connect to Wi-Fi. Uh, so I don't want to turn on Wi-Fi because that's a battery blowtorch right now. So if I do that, I'm probably going to to kick myself under. Uh, safety and tracking, so you can do uh, automatic crash detection on this, where when you're wearing the watch, it'll detect a crash uh, and then notify someone else. Uh, so you can figure that in there. Uh, physiological metrics are things like uh, TrueUp. So if you have multiple Garmin devices, you want to ensure that TrueUp is enabled on not just this, but your other Garmin devices so that it synchronizes all of your workouts across those devices. You can log HRV data if you want to. And there we go. So now we're on a new day. Uh, so my training load hasn't updated yet. And I've seen variations on this where the load almost seemed to be hour by hour specific as opposed to day by day specific, but that's fine. Uh, now we'll go try to run and see if we got a new workout for today. There we go. Look at that. Uh, so threshold work, 24 minutes at 6.55 a mile. Well, that'll be fun. Um, for 44 uh, minutes in total. And if I open this up so I can look at the steps for this particular workout, you can see the warm-up for 10 minutes uh, at 8.25 a mile. So that's a nice, easy warm-up. And then uh, 6.55 for basically 24 minutes. That's putting me at, you know, like three and a half miles roughly. And then a cool down for 10 minutes. So not a very hard workout in the grand scheme of things, but it would definitely be kind of fun. Um, it says this workout is suggested to keep your overall training load balanced. Uh, and there is the threshold benefit. 
And if I go back, let's go to back to bike. Let's see if we can get with 2% left. Give me a bike run. Give me a good one. Here we go. Oh, wait, you have to go all the way back out of that menu to get the, um, the new workout to show up. There we go. So threshold again here as well, an hour and seven minutes on the bike. Uh, two by 16 at 295. Yeah, that'd be fun. Uh, not not impossible, but that'd be that'd be fun. Um, you can say that. Uh, and if we look at the steps on that one here as well, uh, you can see a warm up of 15 minutes, uh, and then bike for 16 minutes just straight into it. It's got it's got no build up here, no foreplay. Just boom, go um, after that warm up of 15 minutes, and then uh, recover for five, and then uh, repeat uh, again. And so and then 15 minutes of cool down, kind of a long cool down, but. Uh, whatever I've seen, I've seen they're kind of simplistic in general, but I'd say that's still a solid workout. Like that's a good, from a building standpoint, that's a good like sweet spot style workout right there. Uh, and I could just simply start it and go at that point. I would then load it up. So I'm sure I don't have enough batteries to pull this off, but let me see. Let's do it. Let's try 2%. We can do this. Um, so bike, I'll do bike indoor so it won't find GPS. There we go. We'll choose that. We'll say do workout now. And then we'll say start the timer. Uh, do we want to add the trainer over there? Yeah, let's add the trainer. Why not? There we go. Smart trainer is added. That is the Watt Bike Adam 2020 right now. And you can see the steps right there. Uh, and we are ready to roll. So trainer connected. There we go. I think I just started in the background too. Nope. Okay. So now it's saying my step right here is 15 minutes at 195. And if I go down here, uh, you can see it's connected over to that uh, bike. Obviously my current uh, wattage is zero watts, and so it's in the red zone there. Uh, and then up at the top would be the green zone, my target range, uh, which in this case, if I go to the next step by pressing lap, it would be 295. And we'll see that here pop up. And you can see step one of two in the red still, of course, uh, and then uh, the time remaining as well, ticking down that 16 minutes from 15, 46, 45, and so on. Um, and so now I'm getting alert that I'm basically out of power range for this particular interval. Uh, so I'm going to stop that because that's pretty much going to kill off whatever little last bit of battery I had right there. We'll just uh, discard this. We don't need that there. Uh, and I'll probably give this a whirl tomorrow. It's going to be a fun workout, actually. Uh, I like that idea. I might do that. Uh, it's a nice outdoor day. So we're down to 1% battery left. What can we do with 1% on this UI uh, overview? Let's see. What do we got? Let's, let's go down here. We've got heart rate. These are all the widgets, of course, that I talked about earlier. Uh, sleep widget. This is something that on launch today, it won't necessarily be there, but it'll be there next week. They're pulling this out because of a, a bug in it. Um, so it won't be here for today, but will be here for tomorrow. Uh, this is a, a bad sleep day. Um, so this was last night. It was not good at all, uh, but you can still see the details of that. Uh, so the baby was not happy last night. Uh, and you can see the duration there. Uh, and you can see less than recommended is the recommendation. Of course it is. Um, and that's not norm for me. Usually I'm a little bit longer than that. Uh, but you can see that sleep data on this watch itself uh, and does not even involve Garmin Connect at this point. So this is all purely done on the watch itself. Um, for launch today, what you'll see is that this data will pull uh, and be visible on Garmin Connect Mobile as opposed to on the watch itself. But Garmin says that's probably coming sometime next week. So I'm going to end things there because, you know, I'm, I'm might well end on a high note. It's done. There's no reason to like... To, to kill it entirely. It'll probably do that by itself another minute or two. Uh, so if you found this video interesting or something like that, go ahead and whack that like button at the bottom there or hit the subscribe button. I've kind of walked through almost all the core features of this watch. Uh, again, there's more features that it has that I can't really walk through indoors. For example, Climb Pro and Pace Pro and all that kind of goodness. Uh, and I talked about those in my other main video as well as my full in-depth review that you can see down at the bottom right there. With that, have a good one.